let's say the charge density of the rod is such that it increases in terms of kappa absolute value of x. In other words, let's assume that the rod has this kind of behavior. In the center, there isn't much charge. And as you go out to either, sar charge, uh, to either side, the charge density increases. That's what that means, kappa absolute x. That means the charge is more over here and more over here. You could create this kind of situation by putting another charge here, negative, 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 right? The, the positive charge will flow this way, or you could say the negative here will flow towards the center. And then you, uh, you can put another charge here, negative, negative, negative. And then the positive will flow that way, or the negative will flow towards the center. So you see, you could create non-uniform rod by placing other charges next to it so that you can change the distribution of the charge on that rod. You see? So now, what's the force of this guy on that guy? Is it going to be less than 0 0.019 or greater than 0 0.019? Before we do the integral, let's see if we can predict. This guy is still going to exert the force that way, right? This guy is still going to exert a force that way. They're still going to cancel just like before. And then in towards the center, this guy is still going to exert a force that way. This guy is still going to exert a force that way. They're also going to cancel. But the problem is that the ones in the middle, there isn't much charge. So they're not going to exert as much force. So the ones in the center, they're pretty small. The ones at the end, that's where most of the charge is concentrated, but they're kind of far away, right, from the charge. So they're, they're like that, they're like that. Whereas when it was uniform, it looked more like this. When the rod was uniform, you have this. The middle one exerts a force. This one exerts a force. This one exerts a force, not as hot, big as this. This one exerts a force towards that end, and then you integrate over the whole rod. So which one is going to be bigger here? When you add them all up here versus when you add them all up there, which force is going to be bigger? How many say non-uniform is bigger? The force is bigger. Nobody. How many say the non-uniform is smaller? Oh, okay. By half of you, you're on the right track. You got it. Yeah, this should be smaller. Right? Because since this one here is farther out, that's where the charge is concentrated. But it's farther out, right? The ones that are in, there's not much charge. So the vector is smaller, you see? So the ones that are farther out, notice they're canceling. The X component is doing more cancellation. Whereas the ones that are in, they do less canceling, but they're weaker. So this one is going to be, the force should be smaller than 0.019. How about if the charge density was like this, kappa epsilon x to the negative 1 power? That might be a test question. I'll give you the ob opposite uh, charge distribution. Then what's going to happen? Most of the charge is concentrated here, right? Now, these guys are most of concentrated here. It looks like this. Whoa, whoa. Whereas the ends are weak. The ends are weak and they cancel, but who cares? The center are strong and they don't do much canceling because they're more, mostly vertical. This force is going to be much stronger than 0.019. You see? Okay, so let's do the integration. The setup of this problem is about the same 
you, when you get to this stage, the only thing that changes is that you put dq is lambda dx. The lambda doesn't come out of the integral. It stays in the integral as kappa x. So it looks like this. 2 k q times d times integral 0 to l over 2 lambda dx over x squared plus d squared to the 3 halves. And then here I'm going to put lambda is kappa x. And kappa is just some constant, which we're going to have to find out what it is. So we're going to take kappa out of the integral for now. Is this the one that we could do an indefinite integral easily? This one you can, right? You can actually do one without you having to use a TI or, or a, a integral table. You could do substitution, let u equal x squared plus d squared. du is 2x two, two dx, right? So you'll go like this. Uh, and then over here, you're going to have x dx is going to be du over 2, right? From 0 to, well, right now, let me just keep the upper limit, whatever. Uh, then I'm going to change the, it back. So the integral of that is going to be what? u to the negative 3 halves. Then the integrate that is going to be u to the minus half over uh, minus half, right? So it's going to be u to the minus half over minus half times that 2. And the 2 is going to cancel. So we're just going to be left with minus u to the minus half. Then I could put the limits of the, I can put the u back as what it is. Then I could do minus, so minus 1 over, and then I put back whatever u was, x squared plus d squared to the 1 half, and then now I could go 0 to uh, L over 2 again, All right? So it was a doable integral by just doing substitution. Now I put it back in, L over 2 here, and then 0 in there. And I get a certain expression, right? I could put the 0 in first, and then, right, then you could change the negative. You could go, uh, the negative, the negative will just change the order of the integral. You could put the 0 in, and then what, what happens when you put the 0 in? 1 over d, right? Minus, and then you put the l over 2. So we got an expression now for the total force, a general uh, expression in terms of variables. Now we need to get rid of kappa, the constant kappa. OK, so we do whatever we did back in physics 1. You do another integral now for the charge q, just like we did in another integral for the mass m, because I want the final answer to be in terms of big Q. So you say q is equal to integral lambda dx. And then lambda is equal to kx uh, dx from 0 to l over 2 times 2. 